and welcome back to another episode of Quick Spin, the Auto Week podcast that gets to the essence of the automobile today. We are talking about the 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. You heard that right. The Grand Wagoneer is back and we drove it. You can take a look at this Grand Wagoneer on our Instagram page right now. It's at Auto Week USA. And hey, while you're over there, why don't you head over to our Facebook? Click that like button that we get all the great Auto Week content we deliver daily sent directly to you. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about this Grand Wagoneer, but first we have to pay the bills. Want more? Road and Track is now fully loaded. Join the Track Club for as little as six twenty five a month and get all access to print and digital content, dozens of partner privileges, and first dibs on automotive events around the globe. Hop on in by visiting roadandtrack.com slash autoweek. That's R-O-A-D-A-N-D-T-R-A-C-K dot C-O-M forward slash A-U-T-O-W-E-K. And Patrick, tell me about this 2022 Jeep Grand... My notes say Grand Wagoneer. That, that can't be the case. Yeah, Wesley, it's true. They have brought back the storied, the beloved Grand Wagoneer nameplate. That's been the big news out of Jeep for the past couple years, the revival of this Grand Wagoneer. And I'm I'm happy that you you drove it. Yeah, I had a great chance to uh, go on one of the first drives of it. And it was really fun because we actually got lots of on-road time and lots of, or at least a decent amount of off-road time, uh, which was cool because I actually didn't even think they would bother with doing anything off-road just because, you know, it's, it's kind of a giant, massive luxury SUV. Um, but, you know, I think they just wanted to reinforce the fact that it's still a Jeep and that, you know, for those, whatever customers who are buying it who are actually going to do a little off-roading, this thing can uh, can possibly handle it. But, Patrick, you took a first uh, look or first experience uh, recording of you jumping into this Grand Wagoneer, and we're going to go to that right now. Hopping into the Grand Wagoneer for the first time, it's just a explosion of leather and wood and shininess and premium components like you can tell that the people who designed this put a lot of thought and a lot of care into it now bear in mind this is a six figure vehicle so you would expect there to be a very high level of luxury and there is um you know we got the two spoke wheel here which is you know, reminiscent, a nod to the classic Wagoneer that we all know and love. There are so many screens in this car, seven all together. Um, So, you know, the passengers will feel just as engaged as the driver. Um, I know we're gonna be doing some on-road driving and some off-road driving today. So I'm just really excited to see you know, what this could can do. But I have to say, initial impression, super impressed. When the Grand Wagoneer kind of debuted and its massive array of screens also debuted with it, there was a little bit of pushback from uh, people with concerns about people watching TV while driving because you can watch TV in this thing. Yeah, I did not watch any TV, even though I am really not caught up on any of my programs, but I uh, I chose to go the safe route and not do that. Yeah, there were a lot of screens. They, they like to emphasize that there are 75 inches of screens throughout if you, if you add them all together. Um, and, you know, it's funny because the, the passenger seat in the front has a great screen and it reminded me of Ferraris that do this also. I'm like, what other car company, like I was trying to remember, has has like actual screens where you can do stuff for the for the front seat passenger. And yeah, that's uh, that's the company that the Grand Wagoneer is in. That is good company. But uh, also, Patrick, you take us on a quick little walk around of this Grand Wagoneer and I don't want to skip any details on it. So we're going to jump to that right now. I'm standing in front of the all new Grand Wagoneer with uh, Taylor who is the uh, head of exterior design for the Wagoneer program. And first of all, right off the bat, I have to say, well done, sir. Um, It just is really striking upon first seeing it. And I'd love for you to just kind of like maybe walk us around here and just, you know, let me know some of the some of the design cues that 
you were particularly interested in or things that kind of harken back to that, you know, the OG Grand Wagoneer right, that we all right. love. Yep. I think for us, it really starts with this side view. Um, the old Grand Wagoneer was very stately. It was a very glassy car. It was kind of upright. And so that was a big thing right off the of get-go we wanted to bring into this car. We wanted it to be tall and glassy and give people that real command of the road feel. With you it. can see the silhouette yes. almost. Yeah, yeah. Right. for sure. So, you know, a Jeep has kind of a, a look to it. And I, this being a premium extension of Jeep, we wanted to stay true to some of that heritage. So it's got this tall roof line supported by the three pillars in a very architectural way. Mm -hmm. And then just celebrated with a little bit of bright work on each one that draws your eye up those large glass openings. And then, again, staying true to the heritage, there's a massive... Uh, three pane sunroof on top giving you this open air experience inside the car it's wonderful driving inside in that i gotta tell great? you it's really great yeah we drove around new york city uh yesterday and we didn't even have to roll a window down to take a single <laughs> photo it was just amazing. look up just look up look out look anywhere and it was great um of course you have that iconic grill right with right. the uh, seven slots. Yep, yep. So we did draw some inspiration from the heritage with this grill. You can see the the notch in the hood. It's a subtle kick up. Yep. That uh, plays tribute to the to the original cars. And then you, if you'll notice the section of the grill, it's got this forward lean with a slight break in it. Again, p playing tribute to the to the original cars. But then we just really went one step further. You'll see the laser etching in each of the grill slots is a laser et etched texture, just giving that extra little jewel that you'll notice as you get mm -hmm. closer to the vehicle. And then how about around the back? Yeah, absolutely. The back, same thing. It, this car is really about simplistic beauty. So as we draw the customer in a little closer, you'll see in the back, the LED taillights spill into this really nice license plate pocket, which has this B-sided texture that's then painted with a very unique paint, which gives it that diamond-like reflection when the sun hits it. So again, unique it like as you're further back it might look like a gloss black area but as you get closer you'll see that depth that that you'll find in like a fine piece of jewelry well the last thing that i know that i have to ask has there been any talk about adding wood paneling at some point you must get this question all the time <laughs> oh we hear it all the time and um you know we hear the customers talk about it for us, we, we tried to celebrate it in a very special way, more on the interior with the, with the uh, airplane winglet that holds the really nice piece of wood on the interior. Um, but you never know what will happen in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks. And I have to say, Patrick, uh, it is definitely a polarizing shape. It is. It is. Um, I personally did like it. Um, I Not for any kind of nostalgic reasons. Like, I... You know, I, I can understand nods to the, um, you know, the, I guess, 70s, early 80s Wagoneer that, you know, people associate with the nameplate. Um, but to me, it was just kind of a, you know, pretty cleanly put together, massive SUV. And it is very, very big. Like, make, make no mistake about that. You know, a Jeep said a lot that they try to make a big car to drive small. Um, and I think they accomplished that to some degree, but then you realize, wow, this thing is actually a beast once you're, you know, getting on roads that are a little bit windier. Yeah, it is uh, 18 feet long, rounding up a little <laughs> yes. bit. So it, it is definitely not a short, compact uh, crossover. It is large and in charge. But I hear rumor is you did drive this thing, which we're going to mm -hmm. jump to that right now. I am on the road. I am zipping over the Tappan Zee Bridge, which spans the beautiful Hudson River. Let's uh, put this in sport mode and hit the gas and see what this 6.4 liter Hemi V8 can do. Oh, this is not bad. Oh, that's pretty quick for a big monster like this. Um, it's really fun to drive. It's a, uh, there's a state trooper. He did not see me. Thank goodness. Uh, yeah, he did not. <laughs> um, yeah, the ride is super smooth. Uh, you know, this has got, uh, air suspension, uh, double wishbone front in the back, independent rear suspension. Um, it's really, really a, a smooth ride, which makes sense. I mean, you know, we will be doing a little off-roading, but 
really the people who are buying this, I assume, will will not be. You want this to be a really smooth ride, and that it, it really certainly is. Um, the, the driving experience is, is great. It really is. And hey, while we're here, why don't we just jump straight to going off-road? Currently in the off-road course, and seriously, legitimately, this Grand Wagoneer is really impressive on this off-roading. Um, I'm in rock mode, which, you know, uh, keeps the uh, vehicle a bit higher, monitors wheel spin, um, keeps you with, uh, you know, some nice RPMs, doesn't shift you up too early. And I, like, literally for a second thought that I was going to topple over. Those are the sort of angles that we're working with here. And... Um, bouncing over these rocks, I mean, you just, it's kind of crazy, but you really do feel like you're in control, and, you know, I, I honestly don't know how many uh, people who get a uh, Grand Wagoneer will actually be doing anything even remotely this, oh, um, remotely this intense, but... To know that you, it has that ability is very good to know. If there's a young person in your life who's really into cars, give them the gift of R&T Crew, the ultimate subscription box by Road & Track for kids ages 6 to 10. Every other month, a box is delivered to their door and stuffed with cool accessories, fun activities, and a magazine check full of facts, stories, games, and more. Sign up now to receive the all-new Around the World box and enter code AUTOWEEK for 10% off the annual box subscription. Just head over to rtcrew.com, that's R-T-C-R-E-W.com, and use code AUTOWEEK. On a quick spin, we're trying to get to the essence of the automobile, and this 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer is no exception. So, Patrick, I have to ask, what is the essence of the 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer? What's its raison d'etre? What makes it special? You know, I kind of think about this question because I always know it's coming. And what I tend to do is sort of think about it in terms of what this vehicle's competitive set is, right? So, you know, the obvious things would be thinking like, you know, American, big, big, um, SUV, luxury, you think of an Escalade, you think of a Navigator, right? I think that this is a very different vehicle than that. I think that this is more akin to maybe something from Land Rover, um, just in the sense of, you know, I would never attempt to do any off-roading in a uh, Escalade or a Navigator, but in this thing you can. I think this is much more of a big luxury vehicle for someone who might actually do some do something outdoors like might actually go somewhere other than you know the the mall or to you know a, their country house or whatever so that's kind of where it where it lands for me as what's kind of unique or special about this one also something that's interesting there's actually no jeep signage on this vehicle at all um, and, you know, in talking to the, the Jeep folks, it's kind of was done on purpose, this idea that the Wagoneer, maybe it's the beginning of a, a new brand in a sense, kind of like Hyundai has done so successfully with Genesis, where the idea is, okay, Jeep, you know, you associate with more the smaller vehicles, more really outdoors, rugged, that kind of heritage. But then Wagoneer tending towards keeping some of that DNA, but moving more towards luxury and like really like well-appointed interiors and um, everything built around the driver. So it's interesting to see where they go with this. It's, um, you know, it's expensive. It's a gas guzzler. It's, um, you know, there are things about it that aren't perfect, but I think it's a great step in that direction for them. Well, it certainly sounds like it. And like I said, I'm looking forward to trying it out myself. But I think that's a good place to put a pin in it for today. Thank you for listening to this. Hey, if you could head over to the Apple Podcast Store and drop us a quick five-star review, I would sincerely appreciate it. And I will shout you out. And also, while you're all cruising the internet superhighway, why don't you head over to our Facebook page, click that like button. That way you get all the great Auto Week content we deliver daily sent directly to you. And I know I just said this, but I can't stress enough. Without your listenership, none of this would be possible. So thank you for listening. And hey, tell a friend.